been a long-standing player of Ping equipment. In fact, my first full set were from the Ping G10 range. And as long as I can remember, pretty much all my family have played Ping equipment. So it's safe to say, when new Ping gear arrives at my house, it can be pretty hectic. Ooh, I need a new two iron. Oh, regular, just for me. Oh, I really need a new hybrid. I wonder whether I can use these irons. I mean, I don't blame them really. These new ping drivers are definitely their best looking yet. Now there are three models in the G425 range. First up, the Max is the main model, which is most likely to suit most golfers. And it also has the highest MOI in ping history, making it their most forgiving driver ever. Next up, the LST is short for Low Spin Technology. It is a 455cc head, so it's slightly smaller than the other two models, and it's designed to spin 5 to 725 RPM less than the max. Finally, the SFT stands for Straight Flight Technology. This is designed to be draw bias, so it's going to straighten out that slice. So we have a really wide variety of options here that should suit all players. So just a little bit on the tech. Across the range, we have a new lighter crown. That's the top of the club head, if you weren't sure. And because of this, Pink can take that weight that's saved and redistribute it around the club. Most of this is put low and back in the head, and that's gonna help boost up the MOI. In the max, this comes in the form of a 26 gram tungsten weight in the back of the head. And this model has the highest MOI in the range. Then in the SFT, again, we have this same weight, but it's actually 23 grams instead. It's positioned slightly nearer the heel, which is going to help you get that draw by a shot. Then in the LST, we have a smaller 17 gram weight. You're still going to get that MOI and added forgiveness, but it's going to give you those low spin properties that you need as well. Okay, but how does this compare to the previous G10 offering? First off, in terms of aesthetics, this isn't really drastically different, but I don't really think it needed to be. There is definitely something really comforting about the shape and sizing of these ping drivers and I think over the ball it's definitely one of the most confident inspiring on the market, especially this Max model. But there have been a few changes from the previous iterations. First off we have a slightly different shade of black on the top of the club. It's definitely more bold and also has kind of less shine to it and I think it is definitely an improvement. The turbulators are here to stay and they actually look very similar to last year's offering but there is a slightly bigger gap at the front here and I think the way this shapes the ball is a lot better and it's actually better as an alignment cue. Then we also have these new creased sections on the back of the club head. This club head of the Max definitely looks slightly bigger than last year's offering. I don't really think that's a negative but I'd also say it doesn't look quite as deep. Last year's G410 also almost felt like it sat up off the ground quite a lot in comparison Whereas the back of this seems to taper off and become a lot more shallower, which really I do like over the ball. There's also definitely a difference in how much club face you can see behind the ball. With the new model, you can see a bit less of the face and it actually feels like it sits a lot squarer, whereas the G410 did feel like it could sit slightly open sometimes. In terms of the three models, the stylings on the crown are pretty identical across the range. The only big change over the ball is obviously the LST is a slightly smaller head. I also feel like you can see slightly more of the club face on the LST model as well. Next up, feel. Last year I ranked the G410 as the best feeling driver of the year and again Ping have delivered in this category. I feel like this model, especially the Max, sounds even more solid than last year. Another great thing about Ping clubs is the colour code grip system. I think a lot of people underestimate the importance of using the right side grip and just how much it affects not only performance but also the feel of the club. Even though we have got the additional Arcos tech in the grips this year, you've still got multiple size options so you can get the ones that are right for you. Okay, let's cut to the chase and get to the big talking point. Distance. I've tested all three of this year's models as well as last year's G410 Plus offering to see just how they compare. I was pretty surprised to find I actually hit the LST the furthest from this year's offerings. I mean, it was only by half a yard, but it, I was definitely expecting to struggle with this model more than I did. I averaged 219.4 yards with this and then 218.8 with the max. 
To say these measurements were taken outside when it was literally zero degrees, to be honest, I'm pretty happy with this carry distance. In fact, to be honest, I'm quite excited by how far they might actually go once it warms up outside. I then averaged 208.5 yards with the FST model. And to be honest, I think this was just because I didn't like seeing the ball go left. Obviously this has the extra technology designed to help people with a slice, but typically I already hit a small draw, so it's obviously not designed for me, but I can definitely say it promotes a draw. So in the interest of fairness, I then went and hit some shots in my net with this, because I couldn't see where the ball was going, so I thought it would give me a bit more accurate on distance, and I actually got the number up to 214.5 yards, so pretty similar to the other ones really on distance. Now, other than the obvious difference in model type here, the only other difference was that I've got the LST in a 9 degree head compared to the others in a 10.5. So on average throughout my testing, I was hitting up on the ball about 2 degrees, and my ball speed was around the 130 mile an hour mark. So in terms of fitting, Ping say that the optimal launch and spin for this want to be about 15.3 for launch and then 2450 for spin. So if we take a look at the data that I got from the different clubs, I was actually pretty spot on in terms of launch with the LST coming out at 15.28, but it was quite inconsistent ranging between 12 and 18. And I do find this happens a lot personally for me when I drop down in loft from a 10.5 to a nine. I have to say though, I was spinning this way too low. Literally, it averaged out at 17.95, which doesn't sound that bad, but I had some shots in there at like low 1200s. So I think this was a combination of the loft and the club head tech. I don't spin it that much and I don't swing it that fast. So clearly this just isn't the model for me. Next, the FST was almost the complete opposite. I was spinning it a bit too high at 2,676. I mean, it's not anything drastic, but probably a little more than I would want. And then I was launching this at 17 degrees on average, which is definitely a bit high. And I had some shots launching up at 19.7. So I dread to think what would happen if they were going into the wind. They might even start coming backwards. I mean, there's definitely some good tech in this club, but it's just not designed to match up with my swing tendencies. Finally, we have the max model. And in terms of numbers, this was pretty on the mark for me. I was launching this at 15.5 degrees and the spin was close to 2,200. So pretty ideal and very close to Ping's targets here. Now, last season I was custom fit into the Ping G410 Plus model and I really liked how this performed. It was second in my best driver's test. And you can imagine Ping got this set up pretty perfect when I went for a custom fitting. I was launching this at 15.5 in my testing and spinning it at just over 2,500. But in terms of distance, I was hitting this 214.8 yards on average compared to 218.9 in the new Ping G425 model. Now, obviously this is only four yards further, but I think the most interesting distance data for me was looking at how my best and my worst shots compared between the two models. My shortest carry with the Ping G410 was down at 208 yards, compared to 216 with the G425 model. So that's a pretty solid eight yard difference. Then my best shot with the Ping G425 was up at 223 yards compared to 219 with the last year's plus model. So it appears it's really helping you out more with your missed strikes, which is definitely what most golfers need. And it follows that extra forgiveness story that Ping have got behind this range. I actually managed to get on the course with the Max model before lockdown. And I really preferred the ball flight compared to last year's offering. Sometimes with the G410 Plus, I felt like the ball could launch a little bit high and almost get a bit balloony. I really didn't have that with this year's model. It was definitely a lot more of a penetrating fly and I help, felt that it held its line better because of that. Maybe this was down to the slightly lower spin I saw on the testing because it was spinning about 350 less than the G410. The dispersion was actually ridiculously consistent as well. And another thing to note is I just felt really comfortable using this straight away out on the golf course, which definitely isn't always the case with a new golf club. It just felt really solid, and it was almost hard to imagine actually hitting a bad shot with this, which I guess is the dream really. Overall, I was really impressed with the performance here. The Max model was definitely one that suited me the most, and it's already a contender to go in my bag for 2021. Right. 
that's all for today but here are my key takeaways definitely an improvement in performance but i would say most noticeably an improvement on your bad shots so definitely that forgiveness story there from pin the max model was definitely the best for me but if you're a slicer i would be looking at the sft model and if you're someone who spins it too much you definitely want to be looking at the lst instead if you have any questions on any of the range on anything that i haven't covered feel free to drop them in the comments below or send me a message on Twitter or Instagram. I'll be reviewing the fairway woods, the hybrids, the irons and the crossover in this range. So make sure you keep your eyes on our channel in the coming weeks as those videos are added too. As always, make sure you've hit that subscribe button and if you're after more golf content, head over to the National Club Golfer social media channels for more.